Welcome to our time of devotion. We're delighted that you have joined us. Our scripture passage for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. We're picking up right after Jesus returned from his 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. This is the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. Hear now the word of God. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, good and gracious God, to the word just read and the words to come, that they might point to the word made flesh in Jesus the Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. One of the first things that I noticed in this short passage is that Matthew is quoting a passage from Isaiah. You may recognize the text as we often read this during the Advent season as well as on Christmas Eve as part of the prophecy fulfillment. Listen to Isaiah 9 beginning at the second verse and see if you hear anything different than what we read in Matthew's verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light that just rolls off the tongue. But did you hear the slightly different verb? Matthew wrote, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. One commentary wrote that Matthew has them sitting in darkness rather than walking because the spiritual darkness is so thick it immobilizes. The verb to sit aptly denotes a sluggish solitude. The nations are so far in the dark, they cannot even move. Have you ever felt that way? It sounds like a deep depression on a personal level. I've flirted with the blues at times and have had short seasons of malaise, but I have not been at the bottom of the pit the way I understand some folks have. I can also imagine a similar feeling maybe consuming the citizens in the West Bank. Or how about the people in Ukraine and even many of the people actually living in Russia? The occupation of a ruthless dictator in modern times is not unlike Galilee under Roman rule, life marked by darkness and death, taxes and oppression. By referring to Isaiah in his text, Matthew revealed one of his important goals, showing how Jesus is the fulfillment of prophecy. Since Matthew mostly wrote for a Jewish audience, they would have been familiar with this prophecy and others. As Jesus moved from his hometown into the lands of two of the tribes of Israel, Zebulun and Naphtali, the Jewish audience knows that Jesus is now in the land God had promised to the Israelites. This is the place where God should have sovereignty, but now Rome claims that land. Jesus' first words in this promised land echo those of the newly imprisoned John the Baptizer. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. In Matthew's Greek, repent literally means to change one's mind, but it is loaded with the overtones of its Hebrew counterpart, to turn or return to God. Either way, get yourself a new orientation for the way you live, and then you act on it. Now, it's one thing to repent, to say you're sorry, and to head in a better direction, but some people like to take it a step further and actually repair the harm they inflicted. We want to participate in our own redemption instead of sitting while Jesus does all of the work. We too want to be agents of God's grace in the world. Barbara Brown Taylor calls this extra step of repentance penance. 
She writes, just for a lark, imagine going to your pastor and confessing your rampant materialism, your devotion to things instead of people, and your isolation from the poor whom Jesus loved. Then imagine being forgiven and given your penance. To select five of your favorite things, including perhaps your Bose radio and your new coach book bag, and to match them up with five people who you know would turn cartwheels to have them. Then on Saturday, put your lawnmower in your trunk, drive down to that transitional neighborhood where all the old people live, and offer to mow lawns for free until dark. Discerning sinners will note that none of this is standard punishment. It is penance, which is not for the purpose of inflicting pain, but for the much higher purpose of changing lives by restoring relationships. Penance is the acceptance of responsibility for repair, and it is one of the most healing things a repentant sinner can do, as well as one of the most painful. True repentance promises us reunion with God and with one another. It promises us restoration to community and to all the responsibilities that go along with life in relationship. Our desire to repent, to repair and to be restored to God and community is all because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus came near and then sent us the Holy Spirit who is as near as our very breath, helping us to recognize God who is always with us in this present moment, inviting us to grow into the people God created us to be. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? We give you thanks, O God, for this day of life. Help us to sense your presence among us as we try to follow you more closely with our words and our actions. May your grace, peace, and love fill us on this day so that we might be easily recognized as your children in each of our encounters wherever we go. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.